We're starting. Don't say a word, girl. All right. Well, this is live with Good Knit Kisses. Hi, welcome to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen. And today we are talking about some loom knitting terms. It is loom knitting day and here at GKK. Loom knitting day, GKK. <laughs> uh, so uh, while we wait for people to hop on, I uh, just want to explain what's happening today. I'm doing this is the first time I'm doing a live interview with someone. And so there's a little bit of a glitchiness. There's a little bit of a delay start. So um, please let me know when you hop on. If you are um, if you're joining me for the first time, be sure and write new and tell me where you're from. Um, type it in the chat box and um, let me know um, if you're joining us and you join us again. Of course, say hello. And I always like to know where you're from and what's going on today. Uh, this can be a very short broadcast. And I have a special guest joining us, but I don't even want to tell you who uh, it will. We know, okay, we are going to have Joanne Gay on, but I have someone to say something before we start. So before we start, I want to tell you, it's going to be a, a limiting talk day. And what does she think about that? You know what? It's a good thing. <laughs> All right, come on in, girl. This is Joanne Gay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she said we were on the phone yesterday and my husband heard her on speaker and she says, it's a good thing. And like in her voice on speaker, my husband's like, are you talking to Martha Stewart? Like he totally was like, really? He really thought that. And what I love is the fact that he would think that I would be on the phone with Martha Stewart. Like that's totally in my realm. Or that I would be Martha Stewart. That you would be Martha Stewart. Like, <laughs> is that amazing? And Martha Stewart and I are totally chummy. And so her response was, um, <laughs> I didn't go to prison. <laughs> if you're just joining us on and this is out of context, you'll have to watch it all over again. And this is a new format for me. So it has a bit of a delay. There's a lag. So I don't know about our voices lining up and all that stuff. So this is absolutely new. Um, Joanne Gay is joining me. She is um, she has started writing her own patterns for loom knitting. Um, she is an avid kiss loom knitter and does some amazing work. Um, she has a background in doing some needle knitting, and I believe you do some crochet too, right? Yeah, actually yeah I actually started with. Started with yes. Okay. And um, so, in in effort of time, we're gonna we're gonna take about. 20 minutes here and we're going to talk about loom knitting terms and um i did i do want to i do want to say yesterday in my q a i did discuss that i would talk about the um knit and pearl tool the new one out um however i need some more time to do a little bit more testing and get really good at how to show you because i don't want you to see me struggle with doing it because i think there is going to be a bit of a learning curve and i want to be able to do like my normal kind of thing so i have a whole basket of stuff down here that i'm going to be working on later this afternoon and um anyway so i I want to be able to do that fully so i'll be featuring that next week so we want to talk about standardization of loom knitting terms now we have lots of designers and pattern makers out there that are, have been doing things for years and they're doing an outstanding job and everybody's doing the best job that they can do and and they've learned to do either on the fly or they've studied but it's a really awesome thing to be able to try and get together and standardize a few terms so that we all kind of know what we're talking about. And, you know, if an old term needs to kind of die off and, and we get everything to be sort of succinct, I think that's a good thing to do. What do you think about this, Joanne? <laughs> right. Well, I came to loom knitting after knowing how to needle knit. And there was some confusion because of some of the terminology that was used in relation to loom knitting that might have a different meaning in needle knitting um, and vice versa. So I think standardizing these kind of terms is gonna be helpful for everyone. And it's gonna make um, reading patterns and using patterns um, a little easier across the board. I agree, I agree. Um, we have, um, we have so many, so many terms and everything um, out there, and um, and so many of them are how you perform it. <laughs> it sounds funny. How you wrap it on a peg, or oh, don't wrap the peg, or what direction, or if it makes a um, it makes a pattern as you wrap it. And 
I think that's really nice for descriptions of how to do something, but I think a standard term is definitely um, doable. Um, one of the, well, one of the things is um, I think, and I'm just going to put this out here. I think manufacturers are um, uh, the big, the big detractor, the, the part that has made, limit and get a bad rap in some way, but also popularize it because they decided to long time ago to make the e-wrap the main way to um, learn how to knit on a knitting loom. Um, e-wrapping is, is easy and it works really fast. The problem is it's not pro appropriate for the type of mass, you know, yarn, like worsted weight yarn on a large gauge loom. It really should be a um, different yarn or a different loom, <laughs> you know? So, um, but e-wrap is actually knit through the back loop, as you know, twist, a twisted knit stitch and it makes a Y instead of a standard V. And so there's actually four different knitting terms. We've got um, let's start at this, the smallest gauge. There's flat knit. There's, um, there's also the U um, wrap, the U knit. Then there is a traditional knit or a true knit, or some people call it a reverse pearl because you do it in the opposite format of a pearl. Then there is an E wrap, which is actually a twisted knit stitch, but is still a knit stitch. And all four are stock and knit and all four can roll. And without talking about the pearl, just making it a fully a knit um, topic, that's really what we wanted to concentrate on. And then um, standardizing those things. And um, we're thinking, what if we kind of abbreviate these terms, make sure like whenever they're um, shortened in an acronym that the, um, the last one is K for knit. And we put a, an initial one or two initials in front of that to start it. So what are your thoughts on, um, oh, and by the way, this is the reason why I listed them in that order is because this is the gauge tightness. OK, so how small it is to how large it is and how stretchy it is. So flat being the smallest, E-wrap being the largest. Um, what what are your thoughts on on those things, Joanne? Can you get me? I think we have a delay. Okay, I think her screen is frozen. We're not hearing her, but um, I'm going to talk, and if she interrupts you, that's okay. So, um, oh, you got it. Okay, here we go. Those stitches that are possible, and learning that about those four and the little kind of subtle differences in um, the size of the stitch really opened it up. As loom knitters, we're cemented to that number, that distance between the pegs. Mm -hmm. We can't adjust that gauge. We can't just go to a different needle size like we do with ne when you're needle knitting mm -hmm. to kind of tweak the size a little bit, make it a little bigger, make it a little smaller. But we have different knit stitches we can do to kind of tweak the size of things. Absolutely. And to be able to standardize those terms. So when you're looking at a pattern, you've got, you know, and you know, maybe an EWK for an E-wrap knit and a UK for a U-knit. Mm -hmm. To know right off the bat when you see it in a pattern, it ends in a K, it's a kind of knit stitch, I think is very important. It's very yeah. important. I agree. And I think if those had been standardized um, earlier on, I think it would make things a little more um, understandable as far as just some of the nuances of loom knitting that you don't deal with when you're working on needles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the, one of the misnomers is because we do so much e-wrapping in, um, in loom knitting. Um, it's really, it's really at our, our own disadvantage and we're not even aware of it because it's, it's like a crutch. Um, we get really stuck on it. And, and I, I've been, I've been, uh, what is it, privy? <laughs> I've, I've succumbed to that crutch. Um, <laughs> I don't want to call myself a victim, but you know, I mean, it's just, it's easy. And, and the, the, I've kind of perpetuated it in my own patterns because I'm like, well, that's what everybody does. So I'll just write the pattern this way and we'll just do it this way because everybody knows that they're comfortable. And I did it out of like comfort for other people. It's kind of like, 
you know, what makes a good mom is, is knowing your kids' needs and what that they can work with. What makes a great mom is you're going to challenge your child, right? And not that everyone's a child, but like, with, but as a teacher, I'm going to challenge my students and I'm not going to pacify my students. And I want them to succeed. And I want them to, because I, I hear the desire is, I want to do this needle pattern. How do I convert it? Well, that's awesome. First of all, that's the first step. Yay. The second thing is, okay, we have to get you working on standard knits. I want you <laughs> to do an actual, a regular knit stitch. I'm saying regular knit. Maybe it needs to be RK. I don't know. Okay. That's a whole new thing. But, but just a knit stitch instead of twisting it. How often, Joanne, <clears throat> this is a baby question because I know, how often do you see knit through the back loop or twisted loop, which is what <laughs> In needles. How often? Feedback, so you may have to turn it down. You don't see it very often. Yeah. It's only used as a specific design element that kind of twisted stitch once and honestly that's what kept me really died years ago was I thought that was all We're having a bit of a, well, on my end, I am, there's a bit of a delay. Um, I'm not sure if it's, um, if it's lagging on your end, if you're having a sound issue, let me know everyone. Um, but I catch what you're saying, Joanne. Um, sorry, I was looking at my phone to check out how this is working. If it's working right. I think we're having a bit of a lag. So if you can hear me, I'll just kind of speak to that. Yeah. You're not, you're not actually seeing it very often. Um, it's, it's very strategic when it's used. Um, a lot of times when you're knitting through the back loop, it might be to reposition um, how a, um, a an increase happened um, before that, or um, maybe a purl, a purl stitch uh, needs to be uh, purled through the back loop when it's on the wrong side, which would be on the right side that it's actually a twisted uh, stitch. So actually I've seen purl through the back loop many times um, on the wrong side um, for resetting up how um, behind like a cable or, or something else was performed on needles. And so um, that's how um, that's that's how I've seen it. Um, the clapity is a um, a the clapity is a good um, indicator of what you would use it for. So if you've made the Clapity, uh, if you haven't seen it, check out the my YouTube channel because I have something called it's Clapotis, C L A P O T I S. It's a um, it's a stole or a, a wide um, scarf or shawl. And uh, anyway, it has in needles um, uh, knit through the back loop or every certain uh, amount of area because then you actually like untwist it and it gives you extra length to that yarn. Um, you actually let that one go later on and pull out some of these rolls and it rows and it drops the stitch for you. So it's very strategic in that. And um, when that stitch is um, twisted, um, you can also have like a field of very, very smooth V's. And then all of a sudden you have this bump and you could, I had this really, um, like, say you don't want a ribbed look, but maybe you want, um, like, a really distinctive line going up that's still in its stitch, but it has this, like, Y. So you could have this really smooth V and then a Y. So if you strategize how you do it and in the right yarn, it can have a really cool effect, right? Um, so anyway, that's that's the distinction between that. So, like, kind of moving off the E-wrap, but as far as talking about the abbreviations, I'm thinking a good standard would be to start saying an EWK. We already use EW and um, I'm waiting for Joanne's screen to unfreeze. Um, I'm sorry. Let's see. Let me unpause it. When she unfreezes, <laughs> I'll take it off of there. Um, uh, Joanne, you may have to, um, I, since I'm already running the broadcast, you may be able to close it down and come right back in. So um, do what you did earlier when we were testing it. <laughs> Um, anyway, the, um, 
was I saying? So I'm thinking EWK would be a great way to say it because everybody's already familiar. There's no reason to say EK. So EWK would be the way to say it. And then I'm thinking if we start saying UK for unit and um, FK Am I back? for flatnet. There she is. She's back on. Everybody's already familiar. You might have to turn your volume down because I, I think there's a little feedback. WK would be the way to say it. And then what I'm thinking if we start saying UK unit and okay am I on again yes you are you're on again okay good that was like the goofiest face to be stuck on that was and wonderful I'm, I didn't even realize <laughs> oh I can switch the screen to a full screen and not have to see you go <laughs> sorry <Yeah. laughs> Like, how awful is that? <laughs> You're beautiful that's, anyway. That's terrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so where were we? <laughs> okay, so I was talking about the E-Rep. I kind of covered, like, what it looks like, and I even talked about the advantages of having it in the Clapity and and maybe even building your pattern around it but like to not just use that and to get used to using other things but i want to be able to standardize and so i was thinking because we already call it ew let's just call it ewk so that everybody understands that it's a knit stitch and then moving forward i'm thinking an fk for flat knit and a uk for unit are absolutely um the next thing to go right what do you think about those three alone i like that I like it a lot. I really like having, you know, something that designates each of those as a type of knit stitch. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's important that everybody know that there are different different options out there. So yeah. I love it. I love it. Good. Yay. Um, <laughs> and what do you guys think? I'm going to put maybe put some of y'all's comments up on the screen here and uh, and see what you think of, of those kind of standardizations. And then let's kind of start talking about... Um, um, okay, this word, the next word for knit, I'm going to say, let's, let's, let's be neutral and say regular knit just for a second. What do you think about the words traditional versus true? What are your thoughts and feelings and stuff around that? Um, I have seen true knit used more often. So I would be inclined to go with a true knit stitch. Okay. Um, works as well, but just as far as what I've written out patterns often, so I that pattern. We're getting the freezy again, man. Right when she Seen starts getting often. into an amazing <laughs> point too. But I think using TK as an abbreviation just works. Okay, I'm going to take it off of your, your face for a second so you're not stuck. Oh, and no. we still hear you. <laughs> I think we can still hear you. Okay, are you unstuck yet? No, <laughs> Did oh, I in the bottom corner. Okay, oh, she popped out. Okay, so I totally get what she's saying, and I completely agree with that. So doing TK for this standard um, knit, okay? There is a word called traditional and there's a word called true. I think true knit is probably going to have to be the standard because many people are widely using it now. Other people do call it the reverse pearl, but I'm not comfortable with that because it's like, well, it needs to be known as a knit. I don't, I don't like referring to it as a reverse pearl. A reverse pearl is a way to refer to the mechanisms of how to achieve it. But calling something reverse pearl continuously, I think puts bad information out there. You know, I totally um, agree with that. Thank I you. Totally I, yeah, I, I think it's it's just a misnomer to, to continue talking about that. But if we if we try and be really conscious about saying, OK, but we're talking about something that is made in the way reversing a pearl stitch, then maybe they would understand. But a true knit. Right. I like is OK. I, I have talked to a few more people and they've said, well, the word traditional kind of connotates more of like a like this is the best one and this one's superior. And like, um, I can see how maybe that might be the case just due to past experiences or something. But I think moving forward, if we are adopting it, I don't want to adopt the thing of this thing is better than another because it's still a stitch. It's a means to an end. Right. 
the way to achieve the gauge and looking at it from a gauge standpoint, gauge meaning the size of your stitches, then I think that's really the way to move forward and, and look at it. Right. From Well, from a purely technical standpoint, mm -hmm. um, true knit, what it's really saying is that's the one that is mimicking a knit stitch that is done on needles. Mm -hmm. And it's not any more right or wrong as far as any other knit stitch. But if you are looking, like you said, for the purpose of gauge and you want a knit stitch that is going to be an equivalent size to your purl stitch, mm -hmm. that, that true knit stitch is going to be structurally the thing is made to match. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. We still have an audio issue. So Man. I, I like, like true knit. I don't know that traditional knit, I wouldn't say it has negative connotations. Okay. Um, but if there are others that feel that way, I can really Yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, it's still doing the freezing thing. Oh, okay. Now you're cutting out. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo, hiss. <laughs> I hope that when I switch the screen from me to, like, from this from the split to me, that I can still hear you or they can still hear you. I can hear you, it is. but it still does this cutting out thing. And so um, I just didn't want you to feel embarrassed because it's like putting you on a freeze phase. <laughs> Agreed. Boo. Agreed. <laughs> so I, and, and I don't know how the delayed the sound is. So for everybody to be like, Oh my gosh, Krista, that's so weird. I love the the dual interview, but there's actually this program called the Blue Jeans or something, but I think it's like something that I would have to invest in monthly in order to do interviews. And it actually has a really smooth transition. So, oh, uh, Stephanie says, I can hear her better when it's just you on the screen. Uh, your screen is just fine, sunshine, Ada says. <laughs> Um, uh, Martha says, hello, how many different stitches are there in knitting? I'm thinking seriously about learning, um, next year, uh, as one of my things on my bucket list. There are an inordinate amount of stitches, is that a word? There are a ton of stitches that you could do in, on knitting. I mean, I've got a book that has 750 knit stitches. I mean, there are an amazing amount, but technically there's just two stitches. You know, there's the knit stitch and there's the purl stitch. I mean, quite literally. And then all others in between are how to manipulate those things and move them around and move them in patterns. Um, it's just, um, can you imagine how cool it is? I want you to think about this for a second and then we have to get going. But there's, think about only being able to use two colors of crayons, but you can get the rainbow out of those two crayons. Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> If we had only blue and red, okay? Okay, if we only had, well, actually, let me, let, me, let me make it more true. If we only had blue and yellow, which are contrasting colors, right? Are they contrasting? Yeah. If we only had blue and yellow to work with and being the opposite of one another, what would, um, not the opposite, anyway, but if we only had those two colors, then um, can you imagine trying to create purple out of that? You can do that in knitting. You know, you've got yarn overs, you've got cabling, you've got um, um, knitting two things together and then increasing again. You've got short rows and all kinds of things that allow you to do um, different techniques. And so that's that's basically what it is, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You can do anything with two stitches. Yeah, it's amazing. Anything. So just learning those two, that's the main basic thing. Learning how to put something on the needles, making it or a purl, and then learning how to get stuff off the needles and weaving in your ends or learning how to seam. And those are the main basics to learn. If you've got those, you can, you can knit for life and not learn anything else, or you can learn everything else, <laughs> but you have to get the foundation. It's like learning how to walk and write. Once you can do those, you can do a crazy amount of things, right? So um, I'm going to have to cut it short because I actually have a big phone call coming through today um, in a few minutes. 
Um, this has been a really great discussion. I hope you guys like it. If you um, want to, I would love for you to share it. Um, hopefully the sound isn't too bad, but if you want to share it on social media or just kind of start the buzz and talking about those things, let's, let's talk about, um, you know, EWK, FK, TK, and UK, right? So for now, that'll be the discussion. And we might have another discussion on some other stitch um, standardizations. Does that sound good? <laughs> so anyway, I don't know if uh, Joanne can hear us anymore. I was going to see if I get her feedback. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, good at Kisses and Joanne Gay. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me and getting the gumption up to come on live. And get frozen in front of however many people are going to see this. Um, I appreciate you all. I love loom knitting. I want everybody to be able to um, do more and go to new heights with their, uh, with their loom knitting. And um, I wish you all the best. You have a great day. Happy loom knitting. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.